What up lads, you with Budget Monk, and welcome to a new video. Today, I wanna to talk about something a little bit different on my channel, which is following up a Byzantium opener. So, as you guys know, I'm sort of fairly well known for trying to help you guys with the 1444 Byzantium situation. In this case, you can see nine years into the game, I have defeated the Ottoman Empire. And mind you, this is actually on very hard difficulty. Ignore that, we got given a core from a random event. But what I recommend is actually taking this exact peace deal. Now that's assuming you can 100% them. This was about 80 war score in a defensive war. Uh, very hard is really quite challenging. And my favorite approach currently is to not ally anybody, including the Knights or Albania or anything, and basically baiting the Ottomans in to attack me and therefore avoiding all of his diplomacy. Now, the downside is that um, you don't actually, you're not using the Reconquest CB, uh, but that's okay. You're using the Conquest CB because that's what he is using. So as a defensive uh, player, you're using the same CB. Thankfully, your cores currently give you claims as well. In the past, they used to just be cores and they would be separate. Now you can see we have a Conquest here, for example, because it's my core. So that's really, really nice. And uh, the downside is that you have increased aggressive expansion, but it's fine. What I recommend doing is actually taking this peace deal. Now notice I did not take my capital city. We took uh, southern Albania here. We took the over on the east coast. We took uh, Bulgaria. And the rest were my cores. And the reason why is to, to have really a powerful follow-up. Because in many cases, after 100%ing the Ottomans, by the way, I spent 20 war score paying off my loans by jacking his money. Okay, after defeating the Ottomans, you are going to have a 15 year truce, as you can see here, a 15 year truce because we 100 percented them. Now, what the Ottomans are typically going to do as he's still pretty powerful, right? The reality is he's more powerful than you, and they often are going to have many more opportunities, just like you can see here, to make gains than you are as the player. So after 15 years, he's typically going to have recovered a lot. Uh, so what you want to do is what I call a truce reset. If you're a small nation and you overcome a more powerful nation, fine, that's great. But the real ideal to overcome them significantly and for a long time, because look at the revanchism they have from losing a war, guys. The real way that you want to really overcome and destroy a nation is to crush them and then truce reset then crush them again and truce reset and so on and so on rinse and repeat so what is a truce reset well it's quite simply knocking the 16 year truce down to a five year truce now the obvious methods of doing this are attacking one of his allies or guarantees often he's going to guarantee serbia or Wallachia. Ragusa can be a good option in my case, he's allied to Austria, not going to happen. So we are able to do it against Wallachia, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, that is the reason why I have left his capital open, because as many people might, or many of you might know, the AI is obsessed with forts this game, and typically they are building forts all of the time. Well, because the AI has the ability to construct forts, and they do it fairly intelligently, putting them in mountains and so on, they also, what people might not know, is that when they are broke, you can see I took all that money, that war wreaked havoc on his economy, having 1,200 ducats in debt, they also deconstruct their forts. And as you can see, the Ottomans do not have a single fort. Now, if we leave him be, he's going to win wars, he's going to take clay, he's going to increase his trade power here, like take Jandar's 11% for himself, and he's also going to take their forts, right? Like he attacks Jandar, takes their forts. Well, what we want to do is simply white piece him. So you will be really, really surprised because he doesn't have a single fort in his country. This is it. Look how many provinces he has. How many? I don't know, 20, let's say. So if he had 100 provinces and you occupied a province, it would probably give you one war score. But because he has no forts at all, um, they probably are going to give about three and a half or four war score a pop, guys. Let alone the fact that if you defeat the Ottomans, you most likely have crushed his navy. 
So if you can immediately go back into war against the Ottomans, you can also blockade his coasts. So in other words, this looks scary, right? But all you do is you wait for the Ottomans to fight a war in Anatolia, jump into a war against Wallachia, Serbia, or Ragusa, assuming they're um, guaranteeing them respectively. Now, you have to prepare it, right? So I can't go into Serbia, but I would have done that if the Ottomans had the guarantee there. Now we declare this, and we quickly jump onto this area, white piece him, boom. Our truce comes down from a 15-year to a 5-year truce. But let's be realistic. Even then, under that circumstance, he's already stronger than us. My move is going to be to full annex Valachia and then release him as a vassal. That's a nice way to do what I call push back the envelope. And pushing back the envelope is the fact that if we annex Valachia, full annex him and then release him, there will be no instability, no repercussions, no manpower draining from fighting rebels, nothing. No monarch points are needed to be spent. So it's a nice objective way to gain power with no downside. Apart from the fact that I would ultimately annex him. Well, in my case, I won't. I'm actually going to use him as a border state. But the point is, it's free power, free gains with no consequences. Well, the problem is, even though we make that nice move in this war and we truce receive the Ottomans, he's already stronger than us and he's going to gain more strength. So we're not in the best shape ourselves. So how do we deal with him in even five years? That's more appealing, right? But still, well... That is why I took the specific piece deal and I distributed my war score in this way uh, because the Ottomans, you can see due to their border, they are unable to get military access with hostile, hostile rivalry. This is very, very typical. Uh, they will not get access through me as the player. It's very important to um, not give them military access or give somebody who they're at war with military access. And we're going to have our Bulgarian rebel faction, spawning from my territory, walk into their Bulgarian cores here in Bulgaria. So after taking my occupation, spawning in my country in Bulgaria, they will walk into the Ottomans' country. Now, if you take a look at the Ottomans, you can see they have Ottoman noble rebels here. And they are very stable. In fact, they have buffs from being on very hard difficulty. They begin with Bulgarian accepted culture, and they will effectively never have Bulgarian rebels, but we can have Bulgarian rebels, which will walk in there, and in that five-year downtime, we're going to have Bulgaria defect to us. So if you look at things in that manner, shortening the truce to five years, Bulgaria defects via rebels, we make gains, and then we use our mission. Speaking of the mission, a fun little fact is that you do not need a Dern to pass the mission. Recover Greece. It is not required. So again, I, I stress that this is a um, suitable peace deal. Well, we now have the perma claims. As soon as Bulgaria defects from the Ottomans, we will jump on him immediately, right? In fact, for people who do not know, regular provinces do not have a garrison. Well, when suddenly Bulgaria spawns in, obviously they don't have a fort, and even their capital city will not have a garrison. So we already have the CB there prepped, and I will declare war on him. If you can make it into their capital before the end of the month, you can literally full annex Bulgaria within 30 days, jacking all of their money, probably about 100 ducats, Boom. Super clean, super free. So if you ignore the Ottomans in this war, nice objective expansion here. No downside if we do the release as a vassal. Boom. Take over Bulgaria for free. And that five-year truce with the Ottomans will come sooner rather than later, right? So we're looking nice and juiced up. Remember that the Ottomans, their debt and loans they have are relative to the size of their previous status, right? So 1,200 for him is a big thorn in his side as he doesn't have as much trade power and so on. Hence the reason that he's deleted his forts. 
Well, he's going to be downsized even more, guys. And by shortening his truce, he's going to be up against the ropes. Um, typically, his capital will be moved away from Adurn because this will become isolated. So he will actually move his capital. It's fine if it stays there, but he will move his capital to here, most likely. What that means is that I can potentially just hire maybe some more generals or juice up a little bit over my force limit. I said generals, I meant mercs. Um, and we can actually not only blockade his coastal provinces because I am stronger than him at sea, he's not going to recover, right, in the next five years, but we can also a uh, uh, naval barrage those provinces. Uh, if we still have this, you see the, the two siege, which I hired uh, in the war against him, for example, uh, with the blockade and the naval barrage, we could potentially take it in one or two months, and uh, we can bum rush him push for this mission as well and uh, once we have taken that huge chunk of land including two trade centers in my view the writing will be on the wall and the most productive thing we can do from there remember is to look for another truce reset so that's what I recommend uh, keep that in mind and I hope that this was an informative video you want to do the same thing as you continue to expand so let's say hypothetically right now the Mamluks look really scary, but let's say that we can attack and defeat the Mamluks. We push down Anatolia and pass our missions. What you can do, guys, is if you are really strong at sea, you've invested in your navy, as soon as you piece out the Mamluks, you can attack Cyprus. And by attacking Cyprus, you might be in a very poor state in, in the war. But all you need to do is land one nice stack, go out to sea, land on Cyprus. They will now be stack wiped, zero troops. You will now be sitting on their fort, which demoralizes them, and blockading them, right? What do you think is going to happen to Cyprus's attitude? He will go medium, erring on the size of being low, li low enthusiasm, excuse me, and boom, you white piece. Declare the war move out white piece, truce resetting the Mamluks. That's how you go forth and you crush the world. I hope that benefited you. Uh, happy crusading, guys, and thank you very much for watching. If you want to see my um, exploits as Byzantium, if you want to see me playing the game, then come watch my uh, stream lately, as this is what I've been up to. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out.